guys welcome back or to the channel today we've got the gladiator out and we've also got a couple of familiar faces with us we've got lucas in the tj and mike in the crv that's right we've got the crv out and today we are on the actual off-roading trails so all of these trails during the winter time turn into snowmobile trails and they get closed to 4x4 use Today is May 1st and the first day that they are open back to 4x4 use. So you can see there's a bit of equipment up there on the hill. I guess they were either doing some tree clearing or some logging or something. Either way, we're ready to hit the trails. I'm still waiting for an engine in the TJ, but we've got the Gladiator with us. It is stock, so I didn't air down too much just so that I don't lose too much height. But I also don't know what I'm gonna expect in there. So I don't know how bad the mud's gonna get. I can always air down some more later, but right now I'm running 18 in the front and I'm running 20 in the back because I've got a little bit of weight in the bed. And I think the boys are just about ready with their vehicles too. We've got Lucas with us today. And yeah, so he's running 13 PSI. Usually when I have my TJ, I also run it in a little bit lower around 10, something around there. And what are we running in the CRV? Running 25. 25 in the CRV. All right, so let's go. Hey, what do you mean you're taking it easy today, man? We can, <laughs> we can go get engines two for one. I still haven't put mine in the TJ. Maybe we'll get a deal. Fuck yeah. <laughs> And like I said, today we are on the actual trails, so it's gonna be interesting. Uh, I'm hopeful that we can get the CRV through. I have done this trail two years ago. This is called Pickard Lake, and it is basically a trail that goes through Pickard Lake, or around it, I should say. We're not going through the lake. No submarine mode today. We did that last time, and it didn't turn out too well. So, no yellow submarine, no blue submarine. Today we're actually gonna to try to stay on top of the trails. So, let's go and let's hit it because it looks like it's gonna be a messy one. It should be raining all day. It's been raining for the past three days. So yeah, let's go and let's get it. So we're gonna start the trail off today in four high. And there is a few more gadgets and gizmos to play with. So I did already disconnect my sway bar and I turned off my ESC. So when you do put it into Off-Road Plus, if you have Off-Road Plus, because I know that earlier models of the JL and JT might not have it. But if you do have it, you throw on Off-Road Plus and basically you get to see if anything is disconnected or still connected so we've got our sway bar disconnected it opened up our off-road pages for us automatically and i am going to leave it in four-wheel drive high for now and check it out that is a logging operation like i said i thought that it was and i was correct that's pretty cool well that was awesome. Now let's see if we find any more cool things to see along the way, because this is the first time somebody's probably taken this trail this season. So there's gonna be a lot of different stuff that is probably not cleaned up yet. I did bring a sawzall. I don't have a chainsaw, so I did not bring a chainsaw, but we're definitely gonna see some interesting stuff today. And one thing that I did wanna mention is you can actually turn your ESC off. So when you press Off-Road Plus and you go into your Off-Road Plus menu, it automatically will turn off your uh your traction control but to turn off esc you can actually just hold the button for about 10 seconds and then it'll turn off your esc and what that does is the electronic stability control basically if your vehicle is sliding and you're giving it throttle it'll think that you're gonna go off track and roll it so that's when it actually starts to mitigate power and it'll cut the power which could be bad in certain situations so definitely we want that off but the trail's just getting started. It's not gonna be too interesting at the beginning other than some logging trucks and some stuff like that. So let's go, let's cruise through it and let's see what we can find.
if you've been following along with the channel, then you'll know that this is the first shakedown run with the Gladiator after getting it repaired. And so far, so good. Let's hope that nothing comes up and we don't hear any noises. But we basically had to take it out to test it. Uh, driving around the city does actually give me a good idea, but coming out here, flexing it and putting it through its paces, putting it in four wheel drive and actually using the Jeep for what it's made for will give me a better idea if it's all buttoned up and everything is as it should be. But knock on Jeep, everything is good so far. So yeah, my hopes are up that uh, we're gonna have a great day. Look, look how high that water is and look how high this water is. <laughs> So guys, this is a spot That's that a uh, you could see it like pouring off the side of that dam right there. Yeah, so we're at a dam. Basically, you can see that the water level that we're going to cross right there is a lot lower than the water level in the actual uh, <laughs> like pond over there. Like it's a good two, three feet higher in the pond. <laughs> it's a little bit unsettling, but obviously you can tell it's kind of staying where it is. But uh, yeah, we'll get a shot for you guys out the window. Yo, I wanna, I wanna... So check it out, the pond on the right is about three feet higher than the water we're gonna go through because of the dam. I'm gonna show them all right now. So... Let me see if I can get this. You guys see that? Like, right there. And then this is the water level that we're going down. That's that's a decent height difference right there. Let me see if I can. All right. So this is the level that the water's at. And we're down there. That's deep. This is all that's keeping me safe from being submerged. That's insane, guys. Mother Nature is insane. Now, where do... The better question is, is how do I get across? Should I walk it? Yeah, that's going to be the best way. Are you getting in I think I'm gonna walk it and then videotape you guys going across. Just wish me luck, I don't drown. I'm gonna take it slow and steady because. Wow. Just to show you how deep that really is. Okay. And then just just a reminder that that is water. All right, we're far enough that we can watch them cross now. Oh, 
fucking Sunday. dripping of mud because he showered me oh my god <laughs> oh man you got you pretty good oh my god <laughs> I didn't mean that hard oh no I got you <laughs> oh you showered me but I love it the camera loves it the fans are happy perfect. we're happy it's perfect We have a towel. The RV, CRV sent it and I'm showered in mud. No, I don't have a towel. Give me that cloth and... Uh... See guys, she's always taking work for the team, man. Drop her a like down there and also say thank you in the comment section because this video wouldn't be what it is without her. As you can see, I'm in here driving so I can't be out there taping. So yeah. It's not as bad as I thought it'd be to be honest. We're all right. We're, it's mostly just wet. <laughs> Let's keep going. See what more this trail has to offer. That's better. <laughs> There was a bit of a log, had to move it out of the way for you guys. Yeah, lots of mud holes, lots of deep, well not that deep, but lots of deep water holes, lots of puddles, lots of mud holes. Lots of running. Lots, lots of, of running. running. <laughs> lots of running. <laughs> and one thing that I have discovered today that I didn't actually know was if you disconnect your sway bar and you gain speed over 40 kilometers an hour, 
or whatever the miles per hour threshold is, once you actually get back to your speed below 40, it'll disconnect again for you. So it'll reconnect and then it'll disconnect for you automatically. So sometimes when I'm going through the mud hole and I floor it, it kind of disconnects, but then it automatically reconnects. So it's kind of nice. We've successfully made it halfway through the trail and we are at the lake. I can show you guys a quick shot right now, but it's still raining pretty good. But there she is, there's the lake. There is a bit of a climb over here, which we did in the TJ last time we were here. As you guys saw, the rest of the trail was pretty mild, but it's pretty much what we were looking for, just a way to test out the Jeep and test out the abilities of the Gladiator and see if there's any noises, give it a good shakedown run. But you can see there is a nice little climb right here however i don't know if i'll be attempting it today we can see if anybody else is going to attempt it but it looks like it might be a little bit too much for the stock gladiator i'll be honest but it does look like a good time and we will be back to hit it again we did hit this in the tj and it was pretty easy so i'm kind of tempted to do it but uh i don't know yet i'm on the fence so I'll be honest guys, it's really tempting, but I think I'm gonna have to let it go for today. Just for the simple fact that we've already destroyed one Jeep in the past month, so I think I wanna keep this one running. And once you get up there, it's not that bad. Uh, let me see if I can actually show you guys a little bit better. Yeah, once you get up there, it's not that bad, but the thing is you have to turn right away. And me being so long, I would have to start turning before I even climb it. And that's going to make me go over the worst part of it, which I know I'm going to have to like basically teeter-totter on my frame. And that doesn't sound like a good idea. So I'm going to leave it for today, but we are definitely going to be doing a more hard trail and a more challenging trail that has a lot more obstacles and a lot more rocks the next time that we go out. So for now, we're going to leave it. It's the first day out and the first trail day of the season. So I think we're going to just take it easy and keep on cruising. There's like an abandoned wooden green out, outhouse built just on the other side of the trees. It's not abandoned. It's, there's, that's because there's a, there's a campsite on that side too. Oh, okay. Because it looks like... Yeah, so there's a campsite on both sides. And usually you crap in the woods like a bear. But on this one, I guess they gave you an outhouse. Yeah, it's like hidden in there. And oh, yeah, I could just make out the roof of it. Creepy looking though. I want to go in there. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement Everything I do, so insane 
descriptive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that spitting slow, spitting fast Got the roast, got the gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time, you're delirious Mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah now that I'm into the blue love, I never got anyone's love. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fake is If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fake is If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Stop being incompetent Mental health is confidence Dreams, it's a modestness I'm not here to say today That's for you to take away I could play a million mind games But instead of say Something not illogical Something not as topical Rub it on and watch it go Make yourself unstoppable Dreams are irresponsible But they're always possible If you just believe You could be so remarkable Thoughts in my head A collage and they spread I'll be great one day Going off of my meds No, I'm not giving up No, I'm not giving in I will make it to the top Taking off in the wind I gotta make it I'm saving every day to taste it I'm patient, but my mind, it can hardly take it I'm chasing a dream that I've had for several ages A bacon, modern kingdom for the taking Now that I've been put through hell I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fake news If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement so the trail does get a little bit more interesting the second half. You can see there's a bit more rocks and a bit more obstacles. Nothing crazy, nothing too challenging, but it is a good time. So we've got another one of those dams here. You can see where the water level is compared to where we are. It's a little bit deep over there. Pretty cool. Always kind of, always interesting and like different to kind of drive by one of these dams. And the rock rails are lots of fun because they just get covered in mud. Every time I go to hop in, I get covered in mud and then I'm just kind of spreading it all over my seats. But uh, I'd rather have the rock rails than not have them, I guess. 
and so far so good it's been a great day everybody has made it so far the CRV has got a nice taste of rock crawling and no noises on the gladiator so so far everything is good and we've got a little bit more of the trail to go hopefully there's a couple more interesting obstacles I'm not too sure exactly because like I said I haven't been here in two years so I don't remember all of the spots and all of the obstacles but we definitely got her dirty today so we did a good job and definitely cannot wait to go out and hit a more challenging trail and a more interesting trail but this was a great way to open the season and to start her off see the level right there oh my God. there's a bunch of these so you can see on this one it's actually a lot easier to tell where the water level is and where we are kind of crazy cool to see though Yeah, it's just a wet, sloppy mess out here today. It's been raining all day long, hasn't let up at all, and I didn't expect it to. But uh, I didn't expect it to be this muddy and this watery. Like, this trail was actually really, really tame and really easy to go through the last time I was here. So I didn't know how bad it would get. And honestly, it was a lot of fun. I think we had a great day today. And we're not done yet, so don't turn off the video just yet. But uh, just letting you guys know that so far, it's been a good day. And for those of you wondering, we have been in four high for the majority of the trail, I'd say 80%. Whenever we did hit one of those rock crawling sections or just a steeper rock section, I did throw it into four low, which it's in right now. And I am in manual mode in gear four. And when I do the crawls up the rocks, I'm usually in either first or second, but I find first kind of tops out way too easy, especially because I've got eight gears. So I believe that second is the best option unless we were doing something really challenging and you really want to crawl it nice and slow. But for everything out here, going a nice moderate speed has been the trick for pretty much any obstacle that I've faced. And yeah, keeping it in four gets you going pretty much about 10 to 15 kilometers an hour. I don't think I have taken it out of fourth gear. I don't think I've gone any higher than that, but it's been doing pretty good. Nice and close on that one. But that one is a little guy. If we had to, we could have cut that one with the sawzall. It's not really a big tree. The ones that we encountered during the winter, those were some big trees. Well, the next one is a little bit too low. You can see it's hanging just over the path where we need to go. So I am gonna cut it down. But look at this trail, like it is flowing water. Like it is nuts out here. You can see it is way too saturated. Like there's a river going down both sides of the trail here. But let's grab the sawzall and let's cut this down real quick and keep moving. Oh. 
there's one. The other one, you think you're going to clear it, bro? I don't think, yeah, I think I would clear the other one. It's this little flake here. Good enough. The blade kind of looks like it came out of a Dr. Seuss book. It's all uh, wavy now, but she did the job. Now we can keep moving. Just got to avoid oh, touching any of that. And I think we should be good. Oh yeah, beautiful. No more scrapey scrapey. So the last thing we want is new pinstripes, which I know is gonna happen eventually. It's a Jeep, we bought it to have fun, we bought it to take it on adventures, and if eventually she gets all scratched up and gets all uh, ugly, then we'll fix her up. Because to be honest with you guys, all the stuff that you can do for protection, like a uh, vinyl wrap or a uh, paint protection film, all of that stuff pretty much costs the same as getting a new paint job. So go out there, enjoy your vehicles, do what you gotta do, and then if you have to, get a new paint job. But it appears that we have made it out of the trail. So that was our last obstacle of the day and we are back on the highway. I guess it's time to air up. Well, we're airing back up, but if you guys were wondering how I didn't get any water in my intake, there is an intake tube right there. It's a little bit hard to see, but there is an intake tube in the grill right there on the JTs and JLs which feeds inside underneath the air box. And the air box here, you can see, has a flap around it to kind of keep it sealed against the hood right there. And what happens is the air enters inside here, your filter is there, and at the bottom where the air enters, that chamber, has three little plugs. And those three little plugs are one-way rubber valves, which let the water out, but will not let water in. So if you go through water up until a certain depth and you do get a little bit in there, it will come out and it won't flood your engine. However, if you go above the recommended 30 inches, which is roughly, well, on a Rubicon, I would say it's roughly to the bottom of your headlight. If you go anything higher than that, that's when you start to get into those actual plugs in the bottom of the air box. And that's when you actually risk flooding your engine. So today we were okay. We didn't go through anything too deep and we didn't splash it up into that actual intake. So we're okay. But I do still plan on getting myself a snorkel for this and for the TJ. And for those wondering, the tunnel cover does pretty good. This is the Mopar trifold. And you can see on the corners, it does let a little bit in and as well along the sides. But you can see that like there is a rubber seal and there is no mud really on this side of the rubber seal but there is all through the channel. So I will be doing a deep clean, getting this thing nice and clean, but she did pretty good. Like I did expect a little bit of water to come in, but compared to uh, the amount that we sprayed on top of the Jeep, like you can see it's pretty covered pretty much everywhere. I think we did a great job. And yeah, those are definitely caked nice. CRV definitely got a little bit dirty today but she made it through just like a champ, like I thought she would. And filter, filter's okay, it's a little soggy, not too bad, could be worse. But yeah, definitely an interesting time seeing the CRV out there. It's not something that you guys would expect to see on the trail, and hopefully we see it a lot more often because the trails are open now, so we're gonna be doing a bunch more rock crawling. Mike does have a lift kit he's gonna be putting on the CRV as well as a plan to put th uh, 33s. So this thing's gonna be a lot more capable. Just stay tuned and hopefully we'll all be surprised. Well, I think that's gonna be it for today's video. And we got pretty wet, we got pretty muddy, but nobody broke anything and we all drove out of there. So we're all basically in a good position because we can all go home and <laughs> nobody's on a flatbed. So after the last time that we went out and we broke the engine, this is a nice change. So definitely, I will be taking you guys out on more trails and more adventures. So if you guys are new around here, please jump down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It definitely helps me out. And 
it brings you guys along for free because you guys can come out, enjoy all the stuff, enjoy all the hectic times and all the crazy adventures that we have without actually getting dirty and without actually getting lost and without actually breaking your own stuff. So win-win for you guys. And like I said, we are gonna be heading out soon. We are gonna be taking out the Gladiator. We are gonna be taking out the TJ. I still have to throw an engine in the TJ, but that will be coming soon. And I do have a couple more mods planned for both Jeeps. So if you guys are into Jeep mods or if you guys are into Jeeps in general, then definitely, hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then guys, ride safe out there. Peace.